All right. Well, from the last video, we're going to start working on the frame. What we're going to be doing next is doing the rear swing arm. I'm building a swing arm into the rear end here. So, from what I cut yesterday, or what I cut from the last video, I had a little over 32 inches left of that piece of steel. And I started out with that piece of steel as being 10 feet long. So I've got about 32 inches left of it. Um, so I'm going to kind of put that off because there's a few cross beams and stuff like that that I want to put into the midsection of this. So, or the primary frame. But now what we're going to do is we're going to do the rear end swing arm. And it's the same material, one inch by one inch, 0.095 wall thickness, and uh, square tubing. And we're going to be doing a little bit of drilling, adjusting the pillow block bearings, because that's what I'm using on here, are going to be one inch pillow blocks. Yep. So here we go. Okay, so what we're gonna what I'm gonna cut first is gonna be these long this long section here. And that's gonna be at twenty and one quarter. And I'm gonna be cutting two of them. It's a little hard difficult to look at this, how this is laid out. Um, there's gonna be one thing that you would change from what I've got here, and that's this bar right here. And I'll explain that when I get to that. But Yep, so we're going to cut two pieces at 20 and 1 quarter inches long. One side is going to be flat. The other side is going to be cut at 22.5 degrees. Yeah! <laughs> Again. I put the NY on the and Miami DC, my first time. I put the NY on the and Miami DC, my first time. Just cut those two pieces at 20 and 1 quarter inches long, one end 22.5 degrees. Now the degree area, that's the rear, that's the back part of it. The front part is the flat 90 degree side. Now since that's the front, before I cut any more pieces or weld anything together, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do the next step and that is to drill the holes for the pillow blocks. So what I'm going to do here is on my plans I've marked both holes, but I'm only going to drill one and you'll understand why in a second here. So I'm going to go from the front end of the bar, come back 10 and 3 quarters inches and I'm going to drill a half inch hole right there on both bars. Okay, so I just drilled my half inch holes in, these, in the steel here. Now, since this is going to be the front end where my jack shaft is going to be set at, I'm going to be able to want to make sure that I can adjust my axle. So if my chain isn't quite very, isn't as tight as I want it to be, I want to be able to move my axle back or the jack shaft, whichever. So what I'm going to do here is instead of just jumping the gun and drilling both holes, I'm going to move my pill block all the way forward because once my axle is in, as my jack shaft is on, I'll be able to loosen them up and pull my whole axle and tire back to tighten the chain. Now it's not really much distance there, but any little bit of distance helps. So I'm going to move this all the way forward, and that's the forward section, and then I'm going to mark the hole, the next hole that I drill, right here. It's going to be over there. So that way, once it's there, 
I'll be able to move the thing back with my axle back. See how that works? So, now I'm going to do that. Okay, so just got those all drilled out. Okay. See? Perfecto. Yep. That's how that's going to work. So, now that I got that done, now I can cut more pieces and I won't have to worry about this. So, the next piece that I'll be cutting, hmm, it's going to be here. Um, uh, maybe I'll cut these pieces here. Okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky. It's two and one quarter inches long from point to the flat. But on the other side of this is going to be a, nine, a 45 degree cut. So, let's do that. I'm going to cut this piece at two and one quarter. Okay, so when it comes to that small, those small pieces, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them at 45 degrees. This is the first cut I'm going to do is a 45 degree cut. Okay, now before I cut that, I'm going to have to make sure that I've got the measurements correct. Now on the sheet of paper, it shows that from one point down to the, from the flat side, all the way down to the point, is two and a quarter inches. So, I'm going to measure two and a quarter inches. I know this is the angle that I'm going to be cutting it at. So then, I put the mark and grab my, where the hell's my T-square at? Oh, damn it, where'd it go? Anyways, I put a T-square right here and then drew the line straight across and then the angle, which is just the direction that I know I'm going to be cutting. So, it's going to be lit sitting right like that and I'm going to be putting it right in like that and then bringing her down and cutting it. That'll give me the direct, the right angle. Everybody, from this point on, the videos get really crappy. They become real pixely, and the reason is because this camera, uh, I almost dropped it when I grabbed it from hitting the floor. I hit a button on it, and it caused all the video hereafter to be recorded like it, it, real pixely. So I apologize for that. But when it's done. I'll show you what I did here. You can kind of see what's going on with it. Okay, so this is what I did. You can see how that's set up like that. It's two and a quarter. So, it'll be like this. Then I'll be cutting another one at 45, which will be going over to this one. No, actually, it's this way. But this piece right here that's going to be over here is going to be designed differently than this is. You guys would do just do another one of these just the opposite. You'd have this 45 degree angle going the other way. Over here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing the same thing, putting a 22.5 degree angle here, but this 45 degree angle over here will not be put in because I need to have some place where I can put a camera, and that's what I'm going to do with that piece right there. Alrighty. So in the in the plans, the way it looks like that. Then we're going to measure it from the point, should be two and a quarter. Voila! 
two and a quarter. Uh huh. Okay, just got this one cut, and like I said, this one is going to be for a camera mount where I'm going to be putting a camera, so a little mount for it in there. And now it's time to cut the crossbar. You guys would cut your bars at the 45 degree angle like this is to go across here, and you would cut that at... Ten inches, ten and one eighth inches to fit into that spot. So, but I have to cut mine where it'll fit because I've got that flat bar, flat section there, and that's going to be nine inches and one eighth. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Saturday and Sunday at the Adams. All right. So I just got that cut, and that's how it's all going to be welded. And now I gotta do the crossbar that's gonna come here. I don't know why my camera's all jerky right now, but I don't know. And that crossbar, the support bar, is going to be eight and one eight. Voila! Jeez, what the hell? What is with this damn camera? One minute you can see the numbers, the next minute you can't. Jeez. Okay, but it's eight and one eight. <laughs> Okay, now I just got that one cut at eight and one eighth inches long, and I'm going to be welding it three inches. See where those little white marks are at? I'm going to be welding it three inches from the end, from the front end of the swing arm. So now it's time to set up my jig. <laughs> Great. All right, so we got it all done here. I had already, already ground down all the bird crap welds <laughs> and took the wire wheel to it. That's what we got. All right, so that's the rear swing arm. Let's put it together kind of half-ass way and see what she looks like. Okay. Dang, batteries keep running out on that thing. Lights keep flickering. Oh, shit. But anyways, this crossbar right here is where I'll be putting a shock in there, too. So, uh, the connection here, and the rest of the cart. Yep. It's coming together. Two days. I've done this. So this is... So this is day number two. Tomorrow, I'll work on the front end for this, not the steering, but the front end. And uh, go on from there. Ugh. So far, so far I have that 32 inches left of that one bar, of the first 10 foot bar. And this is what's left over of the second, second 10 foot bar. So it looks like I'm obviously, I, I'll probably end up using maybe 30 feet instead of 40. So I still got this one big bar here, it's about what, six foot? No, about five and a half, five, something like that. I'm about six foot high, I'm six foot tall, so yeah. So this is, uh, this will be one of my pieces that I'll probably use tomorrow. When I was showing the close-ups of the plans, they weren't, it wasn't coming out good enough. So, here, here it is again. Twenty and one quarter. And remember, this 14 and 7 eighths, this second, the second hole. Don't worry about that. You drill the first one and do exactly what I did with the 
um, pillow blocks. How I did that. Okay, and there we go. Whoa, whoa, jeez, it's gonna fall down. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the deal was with the camera. I mean, th today was not a very good day for recording my cameras. Um, you can see that I put my my jib, my crane camera in here. And the camera that I did have up here that was recording everything that I was doing down here, where I set up my jig and all this other kind of stuff for this, man, it didn't, it, it, it didn't pan out. I clicked, I hit record, and I started setting up my jig, and then I... Got everything welded up. I look up and the damn battery light was blinking. And when I went to when I went to just check on it, when I went in to edit this video, um, the damn battery light must have started blinking a few seconds after I hit record. And absolutely nothing got recorded. So all my jig setup and everything like that that I was going to show didn't even get recorded. So, damn it. Yeah. So I'm a little irritated by that. So, okay, so I put that thing on there. I put this underneath there so it stays up. And uh, then what I'll be doing is I'll be um, building the bracket mounts and stuff like that where they're going to be connected. And this this crossbar right here, I'll have to I'll be building it up. So one of these shocks will be used on it, and that way I'll have a, you know, this is this is actually going to be the swing arm, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to have to, let's see, grab the brake caliper. Now if you see how this is set up, I will not be able to put. The disc brake in there. The reason is, is because just because, well, it looks like I can, you know, it looks like enough room, but the hydraulic caliper is not going to be able to go on it. So what's going to have to happen here is I'll be putting the brake, the disc, on the outside of the shaft, and then be sticking the brake caliper onto the disc that way. And where the bolts are at, where you can see these two pillow block bolts, I'll be able to put like some piece of angle iron in there or something like that and then bolt this to it. And that will be where my brakes will be. My brakes will be on the outside. Most of the time people put the brakes on the inside of stuff, but I don't know. If I, if I did that, I haven't played around with it. It would make my this rear end right here really wide and I didn't really like that. So I thought I'd just put the brake disc and the caliper on the outside of the frame. Yep. So tomorrow I'll be building the front arm parts. Uh, come on. Man, I tell you what, people. I did not build the shop big enough. I keep tripping over crap. Okay, sorry about all the crap with the video with the camera and everything. I don't know. If I would have known that was going on, I would have stopped it. But so anyways, you guys take it easy. Thumbs up this video. Comment down below. Subscribe to see more of this stuff coming out. So you guys take it easy.